It's Tricky Thursday again. Welcome back. My name is Trisha. I'm the owner of Creative Costume Academy where I want to help you learn pattern making so you can make the designs that you're dreaming up in your head in the most simple and easy way possible. Today we're going to be talking about facings and linings. I don't talk a lot about facings and linings because it's really, for me, a lot of times an afterthought, but they're very important, but they're very important and they do help the garment look finished and complete and nice on the inside as it is on the outside. I want to show you an example of a garment that I made recently. You can see this in my feed. It was the Maisel inspired um, double breasted little crop jacket. And of course I do have a facing here in the front where my buttons are and I have it facing on the back here. I also have it fully lined and there's a little back pleat here as well. So how do I get those patterns? Um, and if you're curious on getting this pattern and how to make one for yourself out of a sloper uh, that fits you, I do have a free tutorial and go ahead and message me Maisel Jacket and I will send that right to you. But I don't dive into the facing, so come back to this and make sure you bookmark this and save it so that you can do the facing part. First thing that I do when I'm making a new design, when I'm making a new pattern, is I do a mock-up. If you've been following me for any length of time, you know I'm a big proponent of doing a mock-up to check the fit. After I've checked the fit with my mock-up, with fabric I don't care about, I don't do linings and facings in my mock-up. I just want to test the outside silhouette. After I've done that and I've made adjustments to my pattern, then I know I can go ahead and draw in the lines, draw in my facing, draw in my linings. It's super easy, you guys. So this is my front pattern that I have for, for this jacket that I'm talking about. If you can see, and I'll show you on the table as well, but there is a line here that I drew. You wanna make sure that your facing is going to cover the area where you're gonna have buttons or need that extra reinforcement. I also always like it to go up into my shoulder, so I went ahead and drew that line in right onto the outer pattern. And then in the back, I wanted that facing to continue to meet at the shoulder, so I make sure it's in the same area as it's gonna hit in the same spot on my shoulder seam as that outside, or as that front facing. And I continue that line, and I just draw it right onto my outer pattern, where I want my facing to go, where I want, and everywhere else will be the lining. So. A lot of times I don't even make, if it's for me especially, if I was selling this pattern it would be a different story or if I was making it for somebody else to use, I would actually trace off these pieces, add an extra seam allowance so that it's super easy to follow. But for me, I a lot of times I'm a lazy pattern maker and I don't even trace off and make new pattern pieces. I will just use this as my template. Um, I'm gonna show you in the table how I added in that back pleat where, again, I don't even use a separate pattern. I just use this pattern right here. And when I'm tracing off my facings, I just will lay the part that I want, you know, make sure that I have enough fabric to cover this part. I'll cut out the outer part and then I'll use a carbon paper and transfer this line to the fabric once I've pulled this pattern away, I will make sure that I add in seam allowance. You have to make sure you add in seam allowance. Same thing with the front. I did the same exact thing. So I cut out this original pattern. I traced off this line with some carbon paper onto my fabric, removed the pattern, added in my seam allowance. Same thing for the front lining. I cut out this front lining. I traced that that same line that I had marking my facing, pulled the pattern away, and on that trace line, I made sure I added seam allowance. You have to add the seam allowance. That's a biggie um, if you're not creating a new pattern. If you wanna be extra super safe, or if you're transferring this, and really the right way to do it, I'm kind of cheating, <laughs> um, you do want to, it would be wise, and your pattern would be more complete to trace off this transfer this line to the paper, add your seam allowance into the paper and label it as your facing and likewise for the lining. But in a pinch, if you're doing it for yourself, you wanna save some time, I'm 
giving you teeter tips. <laughs> so let's go over the table. I wanna show you how I got that back vent. Super easy as well. It's just a little extra step and it's really nice. I wanna show you what it does, if you can see. It's basically an inverted box pleat there, but it allows for this extra movement. It'll open up so that, you know, we always are expanding in our back and whatnot. It's really nice to have that in tailored jackets so that it gives you a little extra room because by adding in a lining, you're making it just a little bit tighter, uh, you know, because now you have two layers of fabric that's gonna be hugging you in. I mean, there's room and there's ease in this, but it's still, it's two layers of fabric. So by giving yourself that pleat, it gives it a little bit of extra room and extra give so it's not gonna be tight and that lining isn't gonna rip inside your jacket. So I do this a lot of times in jackets or in um, anywhere I want a little bit of extra room in that center back area and it's super simple. I use that standard outside pattern and, and adapt from there. So let me show you. So here's a close up of that pattern. Here is the front and here is the back. And as you can see, I marked where I wanted my buttons to go. So I just drew that facing line right on the pattern. And then when I drew the back one, I just wanted to make sure that it lined up with my front one and made perfect sense. And as I was saying earlier, you can take this pattern, trace this off onto a new piece of paper trace this line and then add your seam allowance and then you would do the same thing here you would trace this off transfer this line and then add seam allowance to that for your facing piece and then have um, three separate patterns where you have your outer this would be your outer pattern you have your facing pattern and you have your lining pattern oftentimes i am lazy and i do this right on the fabric so i'm going to show you quickly like if I was tracing off my facing piece, how I would do that. So I would have my fabric pieces here and I would go ahead and cut out the outer edge. I would cut out the outer edge and make sure that I had fabric beyond where I want my facing to be. Once I've got that cut out, then I want to take some carbon transfer paper. So I have some here and my needle wheel, making sure that I'm not moving with the piece that I just cut, but then I just kind of sneak my tracing paper underneath here, transfer it with a needle wheel or a tracing wheel. And you can see now I know where that line is. I can then go in with chalk or pencil or whatever you want to use and draw in my seam allowance if I want half inch seam allowance. Like so. And that's where I could cut. So I make sure that I have my seam allowance in there. And now I have my facing ready to go without having to make a separate pattern. I hope that was helpful. Like I said, that you could do it a couple of different ways, but this is the easy way to get your facings and your patterns. Mainly, you wanna have your outer main part of the pattern fit first before you start sectioning off all of these other pieces because if you had to make an adjustment here in the shoulder or somewhere else, then it's gonna affect your lining pattern and your facing pattern first. So always make sure your base pattern is good and then you can start dissecting off your facings and your linings. Now this is my super easy way to add a center back pleat. I'm using, this is a different pattern, but you can really use any pattern. If this is a back on a fold, you wanna keep in mind uh, that, the amount of pleat that you're adding. 
I am going to put my lining on a fold, but you could also have a seam here if you didn't have enough fabric. Just make sure you leave yourself enough room to have seam allowance. And this is a different back, but you can use any back pattern. So what you wanna do is I have folded my lining, lining, <laughs> fabric, and if I didn't fold it, I would at least have two pieces here so that I could add seam allowance and be cutting two out at the same time. I'm going to add a little bit back in the center back. So I've already drawn a line on my fabric. You could do this in pencil or chalk or anything if you're using, you know, actual, this is just a mock-up, but if you're using actual garment fabric. And then I line up my pattern on that line. Now this, the amount that you add here determines on how deep you want your pleat to be. I usually add about an inch. You could do an inch and a half. Um, the more you add here, the deeper your pleat is gonna be in the back and the more room you're gonna give yourself for movement. So once you have that on your lining, then you just cut out. There you go. Once you have your lining cut out, the next thing you wanna do is mark where your stitching line is going to be. Now, I want to, I drew this facing in. If this is where my facing is gonna be, I wanna make sure that that stitching stops before my facing so that the pleat just starts immediately below that facing. Um, if you didn't have a facing, you could do the same thing. Just decide where that's gonna stop. And then also you wanna sew up a little bit on the bottom. So I just made a mark and I made sure to mark it where the seam line is on my pattern. So I just made a mark and marked it there. I made a mark and this I marked it right at where the facing would stop. And so that is my lining pattern. Excuse me, my lining fabric cut out. Now to sew this lining, I'm just gonna show you with pins. You would sew to that line that you marked, sew to there. And same thing down here, sew to there. And you would sew your outer back just the same as you would if it didn't have a lining. But by sewing and leaving that little spot open here, when you press it open, this is closed and this is closed, but you have this opening here. And what I treat it like a box pleat, so I just fold and create like a pleat with it all the way down, and you can press that into place. And then, once you have that pressed into place and these two stitched, you have your little lining opening. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.